Habits are very hard to break because they're powered by one of the most ancient and strongest brain systems. I'm Elliot Berkman. I'm a professor of psychology here at the University of Oregon, and I study goals, motivation, and behavior change. The heart of my research really revolves around this question of what happens in the brain when we try to change our behavior or resist temptation. The brain systems are really, it's kind of two sides. On the one hand, you have the habit system that I mentioned, it's that ancient, powerful system. And that system is really there for creating links between behavior and reward. On the other hand, you have these higher order decision-making, thinking, reasoning systems. And those are the ones that will help us engage in self-control in the sense of doing behaviors that are counter to those automatic habits. Although it does feel like there's some kind of effortful battle going on, the classic example of the devil on your shoulder, the angel on the other shoulder, that's not really how it works at the level of the brain. Here, here let me give you another one. Self-control is an ongoing process. Think about how New Year's resolutions, for example, unfold across time. You can break down the process of pursuing goals or, or New Year's resolutions into individual choices. When we look at what happens when people are engaged in those self-controlled dilemmas, what we see is very similar to any other decision. Survey the options, weigh each of the options, and then ultimately simply make a choice. The way habits are built over time is really through repetition and reward. Those are the key factors. Behaviors that produce a reward are repeated. And in fact, we've evolved special neural circuitry that does three things. First, it flags those behaviors that get rewarded. Second, it links them almost literally on a neural level, creates a neural link between the context where the reward occurred and the behavior happened. Third, it primes those behaviors to be repeated when we're in that same context in a way that short circuits are higher order reasoning. The idea is that anytime we're in those contexts, the behavior kicks in or at least becomes more likely to kick in even without us thinking about it. There are always lots of tips and tricks for self-control. Some of them that you might have heard are genuine and evidence-based. So one example is think about small steps. You engage in the behavior, you get a reward, and then it becomes more likely to repeat that same behavior. Another one that focuses more on identity and self-based models is this classic of verb to noun reframing activity. In those kinds of activities, try to think about the action that you're trying to do, verb, but think about what is the person form of that? Like who is the kind of person that engages in that action? Instead of going for a run, which would be the verb, you might want to try to think about yourself as a runner. Behaviors that reinforce or shape our identity can be rewarding, incredibly rewarding. People derive a strong sense of purpose from living up to their sense of who they are or who they want to be. Self-control isn't about resisting temptation. What it is about is making a choice or a series of choices that align with your deepest sense of who you are or who you want to become. Is there anything else I want to say? Yeah, I think that's good.